forgive me for the laziness of shooting off screen, I'm just not set up for good video capture yet. So here I keep a folder with all of the CSVs of the memberships that will be printed out, and then I have my hard copy.py file. That is the actual script that I run. Then mem-u2 input is uh, a copy of the HTML from the YouTube membership list because they don't actually give you the option to download a CSV. So I parse the HTML with my bash script here, um, and I have published this. Uh, someone wanted it on uh, Twitter, so uh, you can actually find this on GitHub or a git gist type thing. So I'll go ahead and link that down below, but that is not as interesting because it's just tedious it even has to exist. But uh, the hard copy.py is where this gets really interesting. Now keep in mind this isn't like published, polished code, but this is what I actually use for this. So what I have uh, is a couple of things here. So we'll come back to this function uh, first. Uh, one of the things that I needed to do for this to work with, you know, generic text dot matrix and daisy wheel printers is to use a uh, method to strip out special characters because these ancient English printers cannot print uh, non-standard ASCII characters. So I have to convert ASCII, or I have to convert Unicode into ASCII, um, and I'm trying to match to similar looking ASCII characters, but they just get dropped if they aren't there, which will be a problem later, but I, I will get to that when I'm there. Um, now I have here, the length of a page, so a page printed on a printer like this in standard, uh, I think, uh, 12 point is uh, 80 characters long. It might be 10, I don't remember exactly what, but it's 80 characters for what I print here. Um, and then I'm setting it up so that I have three columns worth of names. Now I use the two to figure out how many characters long someone's name can be. Um, and that is a limitation that I just can't work around. Um, so I have that there. Then, um, this is just for me as an error check that I have to include the CSV file for both Patreon and YouTube members so I don't forget one. Um, and then it also lets me know which files I'm using. Now, here is where uh, this gets interesting. I do have a, a small list of people who have donated money outside of Patreon or YouTube, and they're on a permanent list um, of people who are always going to be printed uh, because they've given me things that are so monumentally helpful. Uh, but after that, I parse through every argument as a CSV. I'm not doing error checking because I'm the only user, and in this case, the user is not going to feed it like a giraffe or something just completely wrong. <laughs> so I, I know that the input is sanitary. Um, so it'll go through each row of the CSV, um, and then I am parsing headers. I do this better in the next file we'll take a look at, um, but I don't need the headers, so I'm basically just discarding them. Then for each row um, in the CSV, I go up here. Now, I have to check some things. Um, if there is no email address, uh, that means what? I think that means that there is no uh, way of me doing substitution. So one of the things that I did here was I added the ability for <clears throat> at least patrons to be able to give me an alternative name to print instead of their uh, name that they have on the service. So I have to use an email address to match that name because they could potentially change their username that they don't necessarily want shown. Um, so I can't match to their old username. So I match to their email address that is in the CSV file from Patreon, which is part of why I'm not giving, I'm uh, not showing one of these CSV files because I don't want to dox all my patrons. Um, so I use the email address and then I look up if the email address is in the name substitution CSV that I use. And if it's not, then I'll just print the name as is. But if there is an email address and then they are in the name substitution list, I will go ahead and swap out their name. So. That is, uh, and then the final result of this function, and after all of that checking, is to add their name to a list object here that has all of the viewer names. Then I shuffle it, because I want it to be random. I don't, I don't base it off of how much people donate. It is a random list assortment every time. 
Here I have two lines that may be somewhat redundant, but uh, I'm creating a horizontal rule out of equal signs, and I do put that at the top of the page. Um, and then I have my blanket statement at the top. Uh, I open up a file first, though, uh, and I print all this out to the file in the program, and then I cat the file to the actual printer. Um, I generate the month and the year as part of the printout. I print the horizontal rule, and then the line end actually is uh, something that I have. It's a little farther down. Where is it? Here we go. Um, I have different line ends depending on what I need. I could use the uh, new line and carriage return for LPT printers, but I just have two options there in case I want to swap them around. Uh, but after that, I go through and I print out every single supporter's name and I do crop it here. I uh, substring it if it's longer than it should be, and then I also pad it out, l just here, um, if it's not long enough, so that way I get the column size that I want. So I actually have to rely on the fact that these are fixed width printers uh, and that they don't do variable width characters. So if I ever find one that is variable width character, this won't work. Um, then I write out the line after building it, um, and then I space out a few lines because between, if I move this over here, between the actual line that the printer is printing underneath of this bar and what is viewable, there are a few wasted lines and I want to bring the sheet up physically so that everyone's name can be viewed. And I do pause this rather than letting the paper feed off. Um, that was mostly back when I was printing fewer names and the whole sheet could be held up just exactly like it is there. Um, this printer has a nice little bar for this, which made it useful, but uh, I'm not sure that that's needed now. I may have it just roll off um, and go to the next page point, but for now I'm just gonna leave that and it should feed up enough that the bottom names can be viewed. Okay, and then I, so I add those lines, close out the file, and then it's pretty much done. I let myself have a diagnostic thing to tell me how many supporters there were because that can be useful for catching uh, if one of the files didn't generate correctly or I got something wrong. Um, so that is how I generate the hard copy printout files. And I can show you what, why is this weird? Uh, I can show you what that looks like. So if I vim printout here, text file, uh, and then this actually, yeah, there we go. Now we can see that this will be the file that I will actually print out here. Um, and this is sanitized, so there's no uh, Unicode characters. There's just plain ASCII characters, um, which I have to have. <laughs> so uh, that's what this generates out of the Python script. Now there is a new one that I'm working on, and if I CD into mail here, um, so one of the things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mailing out uh, physical copies of these hard copy supporter printouts and I'm going to sign them. But I will have to label uh, envelopes to put all of these in and send them. So I thought it could be kind of cool to write a script to generate labels and then put them in my wheel writer and have the wheel writer be used to label them. So uh, what I'm doing here is, and you're gonna see some lines blurred because I have my PO box address right there and I don't have that public, you have to ask for that. Um, but we have the same thing, this is based off of the other uh, thing, other script. But I do have the ability to print directly from here because I'm going to be feeding in envelopes one at a time. Well, we'll see, I'm gonna try this today. I, I'll, I'll explain how the process will work in a little bit. Now when I scroll down, we can see that I have the same simplify uh, feature here to remove special characters, but that's going to be an issue when I uh, have to address envelopes that will require special characters, and there are already some patrons who have uh, names that are going to be an issue with that. Uh, right now, I'm just visually checking, so I'm printing before simplification and after simplification, and I'm seeing if I think that'll work, and then if I really need to, I can grab a pen or something and I can you know, add accent marks, um, but I need to see if it's going to be a name that just won't work at all. And then if it is something like that, I have a laser printer here and I'm just gonna print an actual address label and I'll put that on there. But for now, this sounds like it would be fun. So I wanna try that. Um, but this is how it works. So it goes through 
every uh, patron, and here I'm now better uh, handling the uh, headers because I want to be able to use address E, street, city, country. Uh, and those are provided by Patreon when uh, patrons sign up for a physical tier so that you can actually mail things out. You have to have that information. So all that's in there. And then this is the point at which I can see, oh, there's a special character, that one won't work. And then I'll hand write down a note or just off on another monitor that like, hey, this address, I'm gonna have to manually do that one so I can skip it. Or if I see something really egregious, I can abort and quit out. Um, after that, uh, oh, there's another one for no address because some people have done uh, signed up for this, haven't supplied an address, they may not want to uh, have a physical letter mailed to them and they just wanted to support more, I don't know, but I will contact people who fall into this category. Um, but if it's not like that, then it'll print out to the printer um, and it will format it out. I have space, I haven't actually tested printing envelopes. It was really hard to find envelopes that are wide enough to fit the paper because I'm gonna leave the tractor on because it's part of the fun of this. So I had to get special size 12 envelopes for this. Um, but yeah, I have space, so I'm hoping that it'll move over enough into the center so that it looks good. And then that's it, it'll loop, press enter to continue after I pulled the envelope through. 